leaders who work with patients on a daily basis. I would like to say doctors are having a divine presence with them every day. How is that possible? I relate to the hadith where Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says on the day of judgment Allah will ask to each and every one you had been given a chance to feed me I was so hungry and you didn't feed me then the slave would reply back how is it possible because you are the lord of the world how can I feed you and how do you get hungry he said, so and so, my slaves were hungry and you had a chance to feed them and you didn't even take it for granted. Had you done that, had you done that, you would have seen the reward with me. Remember the word, had you done that, you would have received the reward with me today. So you didn't do that, you missed a chance for feeding. And number two, Allah would ask, I was thirsty and you didn't uh, quench my thirst. The same reply comes back, how can I do that? You are the Lord of the world. Then Allah would say there were people, they were thirsty and you could give drink to them and you, yet you didn't. So had you done that, you would have received the reward with me today. And if and Allah would say, I needed clothes and you didn't clothe me. The same reply there were people out there who couldn't buy enough cloths to cover up themselves. Had you done that, you would have received the report with me today. And finally, Allah would say, I was sick and you didn't even pay a visit to me. How is that possible? They were patients. Had you visited them, you would have found me there. Look at the, the, the difference in the reply. For clothing and feeding and, uh, and drinking water, for all sort of things, Allah said, you would receive the reward with me except for a patient. Had you paid a visit there, you would have seen me there. So in your case, most of you serving the community, even if you can't go to the patients, they come to you. There is a divine presence. It's because humility of the human being. You know, we are created in a in a diverse ways. Like Imam Ghazali, rahmatullahi alaihi, says, we could be extremely arrogant and we could be extremely hunger. We have been given these two ends of extremism: extreme in good and extreme in bad. When we will be extremely humble is only when we feel physically weak. Imagine we are physically weak, we have been diagnosed by any fatal diseases, you know, we will be extremely humble. That you have nothing in front of your eyes except Allah. Doctors can't do anything for you. Even if we treat, the cure comes from, comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We may give any medicine, but we ultimately we will say the body is not responding. What does that mean? You have done your part, but Allah has a different decision. So it's not working. So the moment you feel like I'm helpless, and every patient, let be from a headache to a fever to any bigger diseases, we feel, oh Allah, my health is in your hands. Such is the feel of a patient. So you can see every patient, patients, their hearts are truly relied on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is a divine element in with every patient, even if they process you for medicine. I do recall in our previous talk, I mentioned uh, one of the great messengers of Allah, Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Prophet Moses alayhi salatu wasalam, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, who was being given the privilege of talking to Allah and who was given the divine book of all testaments. 
he did ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a very interesting question and he asked oh Allah isn't it you who give diseases and cure diseases of course Moses is me when I fall sick it is Allah who cures me then what do doctors have to do it's you who cures then what doctor have, doctors have to do, physicians have to do in this case? Then Allah's reply came, This is what doctors are doing. And it's amazing, it's great. The response from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was such that Moses alayhi salatu was salam couldn't even ask any more question regarding this particular in, you know, issue, Allah replied, Musa, your question is quite clear. It is me who makes people sick, ill, and patient, and it's me who grants them cure. Then what do the doctors do? Yes, they are eating their food. They are hunting their livelihoods. They are, they are getting their livelihoods. And they can console, comfort the hearts of my people when they feel sick. They can give them comforts. Until it approaches to them either my cure or my decision, their death. So every patient gets a kind of satisfaction when they come and see a doctor. So they are treating the patients at the same time they're doing a job for themselves and they can comfort the patients. So this is an amazing job again. Rasulullah mentioned what is the best of actions? Afdalul A'mal. What could be done? What is the best of actions in the world? Rasulullah mentioned the best of deeds is idkhal al ala qulub al mu'min to make someone happy. This is the ultimate joy in this world and this is the greatest worship a person can do in this world. And you doctors are doing it on a daily basis. SubhanAllah, we're doing our job at the same time. You're giving good news, you're giving glad tidings, you're giving them comforts and you're consoling them. So I just want to begin uh, telling you, I repeat the same, you have a divine element with you in your career on a daily basis. You're doing the greatest job, amazing job. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Tadawu ya ibad Allah, fa inna Allah lam yada'a illa wa wada'a lahu dawa'a. O servants of Allah, you must treat when you fall ill, see a doctor. Every disease has a medicine. Alimahu man alimahu wa jahilahu man jahila. Those who knew it, they knew it. And those who didn't, they didn't. But there is a there is a medicine for every disease. No disease has been left without any medicine. So go and find it out. It is there. And you should treat. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did treatment. So this is a kind of ibadah as well. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in this gathering. We're all fasting. Like Dr. Haider mentioned here, you know, we are waiting for one of the joys that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised for the fasting. People, the first joy is when he breaks his fast. The next is when he goes to meet with their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are about to break our fast in about half an hour inshallah that is the time of joy the joy when we feel the taste of food and the taste of water the time we break our fasting we say you know we've been dry throughout the day and when we break our fasting with one sip of water and yet we are not fully conscious of thirst, but yet we say, Oh Allah, ذهب الله, my thirst has gone. وَبْتَلَّتِ الْعُرُوكُ my, my veins are, my veins are all wet. وَثَبَتَ الْأَجْرُ إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهِ And the reward is confirmed. 
by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we, we actually value the blessing of food and drink when we fast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us. It's not only that we do our part, it's equally important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should accept our deeds. My beloved brothers, my uh, <coughs> chief guests, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this time a uh, time of reflection, a time to return to Him. Uh, at this time when, you know, we could see many people are getting deviated, you know, uh, misunderstandings about religions, misunderstanding about the Creator. But we doctors, you know, we should be in complete harmony with the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more we learn about it, the more we get bewildered. It is amazing. How is our Lord? You doctors, you have the chance to observe the complexity of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is known through His creation. Nothing else. Allah is known through His creation. Two creations are highlighted. One, the human body. The next is the entire universe. Shall I relate to you the ayah in Surah Al-Alaq? The first five verses revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he was meditating in the cave of Hira and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had no clue about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the religion of Islam. He was searching for the truth. He knew deep in his mind what the people are worshipping from stones and wood is not the creator. The creator should be unseen but he didn't have any information, any details until Jibreel والسلام, descended to him and mentions, recite, read in the name of your Lord. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram alladhi allama bil-qalam, allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord. Who is your Lord? Did Allah mention his name is Allah? In that particular verse, he did not. Read. What should I read? Anything that's worth reading. Anything that's worth reading, you should read. Read. That's why we humans are dignified by reading, knowledge, education, determination. Read. In the name of your Lord who created. Look at the way Allah introducing his Lord. How the Lord is introduced. It is the one who created. What? What did he create? The object is not mentioned. You know, it is a it's a it's a verb, it should need a object, an object, but Allah didn't mention. It didn't mention. It encompasses everything that is created. Read in the name of your Lord who created. Again, created man from a sensitive drop of blood. From a corpse. Read and your Lord is the most bounteous. الذي علم بالقلم who taught the use of pen علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم he taught man that which he didn't know look at the amazing meaning the depth of these verses Allah is introducing himself to the messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم in the cave Hira indicating two major creations of Allah number one the entire universe Number two, the human being. Allah relates the, this ayah again in Surah Al-Kahf. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ma ashhadtuhum khalq as-samawati wal-awli wa la khalq anfusihim wa ma kuntu muttakhid al-mudillin a'a. O Messiah of Allah, speak to those who deny the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who deny the the existence of the Creator. Speak to them. Where you witness 
When Allah created the heavens and the earth, were you there? When the Big Bang happens? No. Have you seen your own creation? Did you see your own creation? No. Did you create yourself? No. Did you choose your heights and weights and your skin color? No. Did you choose your birth dates? No. Are you going to choose your death dates? Choose your place of birth? No. You didn't have anything to do with all these things. Something was done for you. So somebody has done it for you. It's not you who created you. We all look more handsome than we look today. If we had a chance to mold ourselves. It's not us who did that. مَا أَشْحَدْتُهُمْ خَلْقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Is it fasting and you're all tired? May I make you sleep? Huh? Let's go in a little bit deep, deep inshallah. Because this is a golden chance I got to speak to you. Because normally, you know, we have the audience, you know, I can't openly speak all these things. They, they, they won't be able to comprehend, you know. So, alhamdulillah. What I'm saying is, the evidence of Allah's creation, the evidence of the existence of Allah, is mainly in two things. One is the universe, one is the human body, and you are dealing with the one side of it. When Allah introduced Allah Himself to Messenger of Allah, He mentioned, He created, again He repeated, created man from a cross. We all include in the, in the creation, yet Allah chose, especially Allah mentioned us again, created man, like We are about to enter to the last ten days and nights of the Ramadan. In Laylatul Qadr, the angels will listen. What Ruru and the angel Jibreel alayhi salam? Angel Jibreel alayhi salam is one among the angels. He included, but because of his dignity and importance, Allah made a mention separately. Likewise, Allah created everything, but He created man. There is something special to do with that. Coming back to Surah Al Kahf. I did not show, I didn't show anyone how did I create the universe. See, what you have is all hypothesis. May or may not be true. Let it be Big Bang or other phenomenon that happens. But no one has seen, there is no one to deny. If you tell them Big Bang happened 16 billion years back, no one is there to correct you. No, 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 that was 70 billion years back I was there. No, nobody would be there to correct. It's all hypothesis, may or may not be true. Scientific calculations. We are not to, we are not to underestimate these calculations. Yes. We have to get to a point, somebody has done the Big Bang. You don't rely on the Big Bang and say, you know, there is no need for a creator, Allah, or any deity. But you have to admit, somebody should have done that, because nothing can come out of nothing. Nothing can come out of nothing. So I haven't shown anyone how did they create the universe. What I have come to see and your own creation. I didn't show you. Maybe some scientists have seen, maybe some doctors have seen how you were being created in the womb of your mothers, but you as a person, did you see that personally? No. You didn't see that. Or bigger, you know, the funny talk we did with our parents, the way we disturbed their nights and days. You know, we didn't we don't even remember. But somebody has seen it, but not you. So you haven't seen your own creation, nor the creation of the universe. Then what Allah says, وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَخِذَ الْمُضِلِّينَ عَبُدًا So, mention, declare, O Messenger of Allah, tell, speak to them. I will not be taking, I will not be siding those who go astray. What does that mean? There will be people who will make theories based on the creation of the universe and the creation of the human beings. But if they're taking a diverse Root, if, they, if they're getting to a different root other than the root of the Creator, then I'm not going to side with them. I'm not going to support with them. There is an indication there will be theory of you know, evolution that would come up about the creation of the human being. The theory of national selection. <coughs> Allah is indicating. 
And there will be a theory based on the creation of the universe that may be banned. And these are the two tools, these are the two tools that the atheists hold on to to declare that they don't believe in God. Creation of the universe and creation of the human being, concluding that we do not have any accountability to anyone. And this is leading to total chaos. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the creation of the humans and the creation of the universe in this ayah. Let's come back to another ayah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Sadurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyana lahum annahu al-haq. Sadurihim ayatina fil afaq. We will be showing our signs in the horizons. Allah says. I will be showing you miracles in the horizons, in the space, in the upper universe, which is above you, other than the earth, in the earth, outside of the earth. We will show you our signs. You will be, until you will be bewildered, wondering, Subhana, Rabbana ma khalaqata hadha batila, O Allah, the Creator, how glorified and dignified are you? You haven't done in this in vain. Definitely you have a purpose for your creation. You know, look up, you can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Raise your heads up into the sky. You can see the marvelous, wonderful creation of Allah. The fine tuning, the equilibrium, the amazing sophistication in the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, we will be showing our signs in the horizons. Wafi and fusihim. And within your human body. That's what you guys are doing, mashallah. Within you, the whole human body, look at every part, you know, ophthalmology to, to you know, cardiac, you know, treatments, every part of the human body, even the skin itself. We cannot explore all of the sophisticated functions of the skin, then go down to the skin, to the veins, and to the, to the arteries, to the heart, to the lungs, and, the, and how does the brain work? Even if someone is mentally dead, you know, yet his heart is pumping. The heart doesn't need any stimulation to come from the brain. SubhanAllah. How these are functioning on a daily. So medicine, medical science will be developing day by day, year by year, until you will have the full conformity about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the meaning. We will be showing our signs from in your own body and in the horizons. So we can see we have specializations in every every part of medicine. You know, we, we get doctors, not like in, you know, in, in, in uh, we treat any sort of diseases. People are looking for people that have specialization. And every branch will have some branches. And this is all about the human body. Look at the nervous system, the neurons, the brain cells. How does SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a character and that, that character could be there even if we have a heart transplantation. How is that possible? The way we give you know, stimulations you know, into our brain, it is amazing. It's amazing, isn't it? Every part of your body is amazing. The way Allah created. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, we will be showing our signs in the human body. That means Allah not, is not going to elaborate our human body. It means Allah will be giving you chances to explore the complexity of the human body on a daily basis. So we are studying it on a daily basis, you know, we are going deep and deep. So, a physician should be more believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than anybody else. What science is doing? Science is doing only observing the creation, how things are created. You have nothing to do other than that. In a lab, what you're doing is you're just observing the complexity of the creation without thinking who could have created this? Who could do this except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except the ultimate creator? So looking at a medical test, a medical report, and anything related to a treatment, 
the medicine, how the medicines are functioning in the human body. Subhanallah. Everything, these are all clear signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to understand it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa'ila mayutu fahuwa yashfeen. It is the one who causes us to fall ill and it is he who cures us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure all of our diseases physically and spiritually. You know, Ramadan is a treatment which is done in, uh, from a physical aspect. We are, sorry, from a spiritual uh, dimension. Alama uh, Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi used to say that human functioning, human actions are all based on the stomach of the human being. If the stomach is starving, then all our limbs will be satisfied. And if our stomach is satisfied, then all our limbs will be hungry and thirsty. Do you get that? You know, when we feel hungry, look at us. We're tired. I don't want anything. I'm just waiting for the iftar time. And that's it. I don't want to do anything. My, my limbs are satisfied. You know why? Because your, your, your stomach, your abdomen is hungry now. When it is full, our lips will be thirsty and hungry. We want to do so many stuffs. So it is a controlling of our human emotions and um, you know, looking back deep in our characters. You know, human is not human by the body itself. We are body and ruh. We are the combination of the ruh, the soul, and the human body. When, when there is a dead person, Every organ is there. He has every one of his limbs, but the only missing factor is his soul. When the soul is departed, we call him he's dead or she's dead. Subhanallah. So the soul has been embedded in the human body, and soul is one of the amazing creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no human being will be ever able to explain it in minute details. Even the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was approached a group of Jewish people. They asked this Aluna Ka'ani Ruh. They asked Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is the essence of Ruh, soul? Then Allah asked the Messenger to reply, Qul al-Ruh min Amga Rabbi, reply back, reply to them, speak to them. Ruh is one of the amazing creation of Allah. وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا You have been given only a little knowledge. <coughs> so, the Siddur of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Our Ruh will be satisfied when the Ruh has a connection with its origin. You know, we all want to be, you know, always get connected to our home. Get connected to our family, you know, to our parents, to our family and children. You know, this connection, when it is disconnected, when Ruh is disconnected from Allah, when our lips are not engaged in dhikr, our mind is not engaged in, in contemplating about the creation of Allah, then there is a disconnection. So that's why wealth itself cannot satisfy us. It cannot. We all feel a kind of wavering in the human body if we are disconnected from Allah. The greatest power on the earth Take time to pray. We are helpless. Even if sometimes shaitan will tell us to be a little bit arrogant, but we will realize that the moment we fall ill, I'm nothing. I can't do anything. I'm helpless. Subhanallah. So this is the connection. Allah's angels do not eat or drink. Yes? Allah's angels do not eat or drink. They don't engage in the, in the physical intimacy. They don't marry. They don't have sleep or rests. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us to undergo the process that the angels are undergoing in their whole lives without eating and drinking. So he asked us to do that just the daylight hours of the Ramadan. 30 days, 29 days, you know, just undergo and taste it. How do you feel? You know, we when we are disconnected from the material world, we have the, the spiritual side. I can challenge you and say, if hadn't been Ramadan, if we are not in Ramadan, would you be choosing to come and attend this function? We will never be. Except a few. We will never be. Why? Because in Ramadan, we are a little bit disconnected from the world we affairs. At least from eating and drinking, from our physical needs, from our business. We are mentally ready to spare some time for our own salvation. 
If that mentality is not there, we will not be able to respond like you did for today. We won't be. And this itself is an indication that human body is in need of salvation, in need of disconnection from the worldly side. You know, not fully, of course, we are not, you know, uh, talking about being Rahbaniya. No. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَخِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ We are a society, we are asked by Allah to pray. Oh Allah, give us the good of this world and give us the good of the hereafter. So there should be a balance. When we are fully drawn to the material side, we will not feel any sign. They are not getting the salvation or satisfaction. Subhanallah. So we are experiencing it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing itikaf in the masjid of Medina. And during itikaf, they will not, you know, uh, we will be asked, you know, to stay in the masjid as long as possible and accept, you know, to answer the call of nature. Otherwise, we will be staying there day and night. So, Sophia bin Tuhli, ta'ala anha, Rasulullah's wife, she came with dinner to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the masjid. And Sophia radiallahu anha, her house, well, her house was a little bit far away from the masjid. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thought of accompanying her and, and, uh, until to walk her to the, to, to the house. Then Rasulullah would come back. So Rasulullah is going in a little bit, there is a moonlight. And Sophia radiallahu anha is a young lady. Rasulullah's wife and both of them are walking in the, in the moonlight of Medina. Why they were walking, two men passed by from Ansar and they belong to the family of Ansar in the Medina. They, were, they are the true Medinians. And they hurried, they hurried in their walking. They hastened a little bit. The Rasulullah asked them, stop, stop there. And they looked back. What, Rasulullah? Why did he stop us? He said, Inna ha Sophia to bin You can go. This is my wife Sophia, uh, Sophia. And you may go. Then they asked, What? Why did Rasul, why did you correct us? Did you think that we may think something wrong about you? Were you afraid that we would think Rasulullah is walking with a strange lady, someone who is not her maharam or wife? Did you ever think that we would think about you that? Rasulullah said, No, you didn't think that, but I'm afraid. I was afraid that Shaitan will cast some doubt in your heart because Shaitan is passing in the human body through the veins, you know, until he will whisper some evil thinking into your heart. And he said, he will jure. So, in order to stop the satanic whisperings into your head, you have to do one thing. You know, you have to make his pathway constrained, narrow. Make his pathway narrow by jure, by hunger, by suffering hunger. When you suffer hunger, you are tightening the pathways of shaitan so he will have less influence on you. He mentions this technique while he saw two of his companions passing by and he was afraid. You know, it's the moonlight. Maybe he would, they would think, Rasulullah was walking by someone, you know, he's not his mother. You know, this may happen. So Rasulullah gave us the idea that human body, when we are Getting our body under control, a little bit into suffering when we move our body into a little bit physical suffering, then only we can release ourselves from the influence of shaitan and elevate us to the status of angels. So that's why we have Ramadan. So Ramadan is a practice to experience how would the aid the world of angel look like. Subhanallah. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you know, fasting is for Allah and every other deed could be some portion for you but fasting is truly for Allah and he will reward you in abundance because no one can see the, the cleanliness, the light, the illumination that happens in your heart 
except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Somebody can pretend to be fasting and they are not really fasting, but their fasting is only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How did you control that? So we should be suffering hunger and thirst. Without suffering hunger and thirst, we will not, we can't get the full benefit out of our fasting. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting, may Allah reward us and our parents and our teachers and those who gathered and simply in here and those who asked us for dua. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our good deeds and may Allah wipe away all our sins and clean our hearts. So, Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen.